This video was made possible by Squarespace. Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So, we all know that the clothes we wear are made out of various fabrics, with the most common ones being composed of things like cotton, nylon or polyester. You see, I recently became really interested in the chemistry of such everyday items and decided that I want to make my own fabric to use in making some cool chemistry-themed clothing. Making any type of fabric from scratch is unfortunately quite the journey, often requiring some weird chemicals or equipment and even just some raw fiber to turns out to be weirdly complicated to produce. That's why for this video I figured that I should focus on finding a way to make an artificial fibrous material suitable for textile production and if it turns out well make it into something cool in the future. Now the difficulty of this project shows even when it comes to figuring out what fiber I want to make since there are tons of artificially derived fibrous materials all of which are made using various chemicals. This is quite good news for me, since this is a chemistry channel, however, after looking at how the most popular fibers are made, I suffered a chemistry-induced heart attack. Take nylon for example, it is a quite widespread and popular material for synthetic fibers, but requires really exotic chemicals to produce. If I wanted to make it, I could of course just buy everything I need, but for me that would kind of defeat the purpose of this project. My dream is to make a useful fiber from the most basic of materials using the power of amateur chemistry, so even though the odds of finding one like this weren't in my favor, I began searching. Now the best place to find all kinds of chemical information is of course the internet, and after a caffeine fueled internet surfing and factorio playing session, I stumbled upon the holy grail of accessible fibers. It's something called rayon and is quite often used as artificial silk, having a similar texture and properties, and what's even more interesting, it can be made from literal trees. You see, this fiber, much like cotton, is based on something called cellulose, which as you might remember from biology class, is not something that grows on trees, but trees literally grow on it. This beautifully solves my accessibility problem, since trees are the definition of being everywhere, and to make some rayon, I first have to somehow steal and purify their cellulose. Now, when I am done with that, I will have to change the structure of the cellulose, since in its raw form, it's more similar to cotton than some designer silky fiber. To do this, I will have to dissolve it in something, which is quite weird to think about, since something like paper, which is pretty much pure cellulose, doesn't really dissolve in anything. Fortunately, chemistry has quite a few tricks up its sleeve, and I will have to create some really funky chemical mixtures in order to make my rayon. Now, upon learning about this whole tree dissolution and fiber making process, I was really excited and eager to try it out, and before jumping straight to making some rayon, I first really want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one, advanced website creation platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Using it, you can create incredible websites with ease, whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, and use them to sell anything or promote your business. Squarespace gives you access to powerful features like their new design intelligence, which combines cutting-edge AI technology with two decades of industry-leading expertise to unlock your strongest creative potential and make your website tailored to your personal needs, which in my opinion is really cool. Additionally, Squarespace provides you with useful tools like their option for setting up donations to raise funds for your cause, which combined with Squarespace payments that makes checkout seamless to customers can grow your business like never before. For a free trial, go to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash amateurchemistry to save 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, to start making rayon, I first need to gather some cellulose, and apart from extracting it from trees, I could also just use something like paper to skip this whole tedious process, but it's way too cool to just ignore and will be a really nice addition to this already nice project. To start, I of course have to find some wood, which isn't really that hard, and instead of getting it from a tree myself, I let someone else do the dirty work and just went and got a piece of firewood from my driveway pile. This single piece should be much more than enough for the whole project, and to extract some cellulose from it, I have to bathe it in a few angry chemicals. 
That's because apart from cellulose, which is the main thing that holds wood together, there are also plenty of oils, proteins and waxes, all of which have to be removed. Also, by far the biggest impurity in wood cellulose is another tree building block called lignin, which you can think of as a little crazier cousin of cellulose, since unlike cellulose on the molecular level, it's composed of thousands of tiny branches and in a chemical sense is quite useless. It is fortunately way less chemically resistant than cellulose, which takes the form of those very robust straight chains and to separate it from lignin and other wood junk, I have to use a chemical called sodium hydroxide. It's a really widely used reagent and can be found in almost every household as a drain cleaner. It's really corrosive and has just the right amount of chemical brutality to break apart lignin but leave the cellulose untouched. Now, I can't just sprinkle some of it onto my log and expect it to do anything and I first have to make it into a solution that will then leach into my wood. Speaking of wood, in the form of this quite averagely sized piece, it's still way too thick for the sodium hydroxide solution to soak into it, so before giving it the buff of a lifetime, I need to break it up into smaller pieces. For that I got it outside and employed my good old axe, also while splitting it I had a deja vu since for some reason I have done pretty much this exact thing for two other videos also about turning wood into some really weird things which starts to slowly become a theme on my channel. Anyway, after a good few minutes of struggling to split this single piece of wood which probably gave experienced lumberjacks a stroke, I now had quite a few of those small wood beads. They were still way too large for the hydroxide buff, so I split them in half a few times, ending up with those oversized toothpicks. Along the way, I also picked out only the brightest ones, since the browner a piece of wood is, the more lignin it contains and would only slow down the extraction. Anyway, with this ultra fine, laboratory grade wood ready, I can now finally bathe it in sodium hydroxide and to make the required solution, I weighed out 40 grams of it and dissolved it in about 300 and 50 milliliters of distilled water. This makes a roughly 10% sodium hydroxide solution, which from my research should both be gentle enough to not touch the cellulose and eat through the lignin quite fast. Now, to marinate my wood in it, I got 100 grams of it into a beaker and covered it with the sodium hydroxide solution. Since it had a ton of air trapped inside, it started floating on the solution's surface. Also, after a few minutes, the whole mixture took on a brown shade, confirming that the lignin was being broken down and dissolved. Now, to speed up this reaction and allow the solution to penetrate deeper into my wood, I had to heat this thing up and for that I assembled the beaker into a water bath. It will heat it nice and evenly while limiting the temperature to a comfy 100 degrees Celsius, preventing the sodium hydroxide from getting too crazy. I left this whole system to slowly digest the wood while periodically stealing everything to prevent any local hotspots from forming. Over the next 5 hours, the solution gradually got darker and darker, going from light brown to looking like some extra strong tea. It also actually smelled like tea, which was really cool. Anyway, when it comes to how the wood changed over those 5 hours, I took out a single piece of it early on, and it was definitely much softer and more malleable than regular wood, however, it still wasn't quite marinated enough. The goal here is to loosen the cellulose fibers enough so that the whole wood structure starts to fall apart and when I took another sample 5 hours in, the wood was now much softer and ready for the next step. To proceed I got the beaker out of the water bath and got rid of the drain cleaner tea, which left me with some dark softened wood. It should now contain almost no lignin, but it is still full of the dirty sodium hydroxide solution and to remove it I have to turn this wood into a pulp. This process will separate the individual cellulose fibers and allow for further processing. It also just so happens to be the exact same thing the paper industry uses to process their wood and this means that in theory I could make some homemade paper. For this video however, I still have more than enough interesting things to showcase, so I will leave making paper for some other day. Anyway, to blend my wood, I can theoretically use just a kitchen blender. I wanted to use a transparent one so that you guys could see what the blending process looks like, but unfortunately for some reason I only have the bottom half of it, so I had to borrow my parents Thermomix, which is made out of metal and adds an element of surprise to this process. 
To start, I got a good bit of water into it to make this whole thing easier on this very expensive blender. I then sealed it up, turned it up to half of its power and started slowly adding my wood through a hole in its top. The sounds it made after I started adding the wood were scary to say the least. It also splashed my background with a ton of water and after adding everything and turning the power to maximum, I prayed for it to not break. I guess I wasn't joking when I said that the Thermomix added an element of surprise to this step since I didn't really know if it survived and if the wood was pulped at all. There was only one way to find out and when I nervously removed the lid, I was more than relieved. Oh yeah. Not only did this machine survive grinding literal wood, it also ground to perfection leaving me with this nice and weirdly squishy wood pulp. Now, after this unplanned advertisement, I can move on to getting some pure cellulose from this dark pulp and I first have to remove all the now dirty water. I could use gravity filtration, but that would take more than forever, so I decided to employ a genius method of just squeezing this pulp inside a piece of cloth. It turned out to be incredibly efficient and left me with this cute ball composed of decapitated and chemically processed three corpses. It was still too dark for my taste and to remove the last traces of lignin I had to bleach it. Just like you can bleach your hair to make it whiter, dirty cellulose can be bleached to achieve the same effect and the chemical that makes bleach bleach is something called sodium hypochlorite. It bears a striking resemblance to sodium chloride which is just table salt and has this additional oxygen atom making it really chemically angry and capable of destroying things like lignin while leaving the more stable cellulose behind. Now, to bleach my wood dumpling, I have to bathe it in a dilute solution of sodium hypochlorite and to prepare it I got 300 milliliters of some industrial 15% sodium hypochlorite bleach into a beaker and diluted it down with around 600 milliliters of distilled water. This makes a 5% bleach solution, which is the concentration you can often find in a regular store and to use it I first got my ball of wood pulp into a bowl and broke it up into smaller pieces. I then poured in the whole bleach solution and after just a few minutes the pulp looked much brighter. To unlock my bleach's full potential I left it to marinate my pulp overnight and when I came back in the morning I was really happy with how this bleaching step turned out. The pulp was now nearly white with just a hint of brown I honestly didn't mind too much and to recover it from this bleach soup I squeezed it all out using my trusty cloth. I also washed the now much whiter pulp a few times to remove any traces of bleach and lignin and when I felt that it was clean enough I got it all onto this baking tray and dried it overnight in my oven. When I came back to it in the morning it was bone dry and had an incredibly fluffy texture. I weighed it all and it turns out that I managed to make 70.3 grams of quite pure cellulose from just some ordinary wood. This yield is surprisingly high since wood should contain only around 60% cellulose but because of my careful wood selection and the fact that it was pretty dry at the start probably heavily influenced my final amount of cellulose. Anyway, this step turned out way better than I expected with me experiencing the gigantic paper industry on a tiny scale and now with this whole jar of cellulose ready, I can dissolve it in something. There really aren't many things capable of dissolving meaningful quantities of it and most of them are expensive as hell or just outright banned. There is one however that while not even being a solvent can dissolve cellulose quite well and is surprisingly accessible to the amateur. It's something called Schweizer's reagent and it's actually just some good old copper metal slightly modified to form a so-called complex. This complex, apart from the copper that holds it all together, consists of some molecules of ammonia and water, which in this specific combination for some reason can dissolve an otherwise incredibly insoluble organic polymer. I like to think of this as a perfect example of just how random chemistry can be since copper doesn't really seem like something you can dissolve wood with. 
Anyway, I can't just take something like this copper plate and slam water and ammonia onto it expecting any meaningful reaction to happen, so to make my rayon I first have to use some chemistry finesse to create the Schweizer's reagent. For this I first have to make a chemical called copper hydroxide which will act as a scaffolding to build the complex on. It can be made from quite a few different compounds of copper and I chose to use something called copper sulfate. It's this beautiful blue powder commonly used as fungicide and I could make it myself from some copper metal, but I decided to save that for a future video and instead just bought some online. To turn it into copper hydroxide there are a few methods, each producing different results and all ultimately relying on our good old friend sodium hydroxide. It can easily transfer its hydroxide group to copper sulfate, turning it into copper hydroxide and just combining their solutions together generates quite a bit of it, which at first seems like the best and simplest way to make it. Unfortunately, the chemistry gods decided that this method is a little too simple, because the created copper hydroxide not only is this weird jelly making it nearly impossible to filter, but is also kind of depressed and unstable, quickly decomposing into this useless green mess. Now, there is a more complicated way to make some copper hydroxide that nicely avoids all those problems, and it's the one I decided to go with. To start, I weighed out 100 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, I then dissolved it all in a liter of distilled water, and if it were pure the solution should be transparent, but in my case it was weirdly opaque with this slimy crust on top. To get rid of this forbidden jello, I passed the solution through a cotton filter and it fortunately came out nice and clean. To turn it into copper hydroxide, I first got it all into this monstrous beaker and put it on my hot plate with magnetic steering. I now have to add some ammonium hydroxide, which is a water solution of this really stinky gas called ammonia. There are many available concentrations you can buy, pretty much all of which should work, and the highest I could get is 25% of which I had to use 110 milliliters. Much like sodium hydroxide, this ammonia solution is quite basic, and upon adding some of it to the copper sulfate beaker, a ton of insoluble copper hydroxide precipitates. It already looks better than the blue jelly from before, being this sky blue suspension, but it still isn't what I want. To convert it into its most stable form, I have to dissolve it and precipitate it again and the dissolving step can easily be done by adding in more ammonia. It has a quite special relationship with copper since when there is enough of it it can form this deep blue water soluble complex that actually is Schweizer's reagent. Now, because I want to make it pure, I can't really use this one to dissolve my cellulose and instead have to revert it back to copper hydroxide, which I can purify much easier. This can be quite simply done by beating this delicate complex up with a base stronger than ammonia and the best one to use is of course sodium hydroxide. Much like before, I first have to make it into a solution and for this one I used 32 grams of sodium hydroxide and 300 milliliters of distilled water. When all the sodium hydroxide dissolved, I paired this whole solution straight into the reaction beaker which made the dark blue and transparent reaction mixture become much brighter and opaque. This precipitate is of course copper hydroxide finally in its most stable form. To get it out of this beaker I have to filter it out and wash away all the side products from both reactions and for this the best thing to use is vacuum filtration. Because of my product's really nice particle size, the whole filtration went quite smoothly and when all the light blue reaction water came through, I washed my product with a bunch of distilled water a few times. I now have to dry it and since it is still quite wet, it would normally take a really long time and to preserve my small reserves of patience, I washed the product with some ethanol, which apart from cleaning it up a little more, evaporates much faster than water. Because of this, I was able to just leave all my copy copper hydroxide in a dish for a few days and it got bone dry all by itself, which was really nice. I used a mortar to crush those fluffy chunks into a powder which I then got into the second jar of this video and when it comes to the yield I managed to make 38 grams of some pure and stable copper hydroxide. This corresponds to a total yield of 97% which is honestly quite amazing and now with everything ready I can finally dissolve some wood. To start I have to make some pure Schweizer's reagent and for that I got 100 milliliters of the 25% ammonia solution into a beaker and then added 2 grams of my homemade copper hydroxide. 
it reacts with ammonium hydroxide to produce some Schweizer's reagent in a very pure form. This process unfortunately takes quite a while and can't be sped up by heating since then most of the ammonia will just evaporate. What's also important is that this complex is only stable when there is a ton of ammonia present around it, which is why I used a gigantic excess and can only store it as a solution. Anyway, I got the beaker onto a hot plate with steering to speed up everything a little and when most of the copper hydroxide disappeared, it was now time to dissolve some wood. I added about 2 grams worth of my cellulose into the beaker and if I have done everything right, the complex should slowly dissolve it. Now, in terms of the chemistry of this almost magical process, the Schweizer's reagent forms a gigantic complex with the cellulose, acting as a link between it and water which allows it to dissolve. Anyway, after about 30 minutes of stirring, most of the cellulose dissolved, resulting in this deep blue and weirdly thick solution I can now use to make some rayon. For this, I have to destroy the cellulose complex to again make it insoluble in water, for which the best thing to use is a dilute solution of a strong acid. Things like sulfuric and hydrochloric acid work well, and I chose sulfuric acid since I had it on hand. I prepared a 10% solution of it by pairing 30 milliliters into a beaker filled with 270 milliliters of distilled water. I now have to add the cellulose solution into this forbidden lemonade, and since I want to make it into fibers, I decided to use a syringe. It will create a smooth stream of the cellulose solution which when hardened by the acid should become a nice continuous fiber and to test that out I filled up the syringe and started squirting out its contents into the acid solution. This made the cellulose solution turn into a single long fiber that quickly floated to the top and started to slowly lose its color since the blue complex was getting destroyed by the acid. I stirred the fiber around a little using a glass rod to expose it to more acid which sadly made it completely fall apart and meant that at least in this form I probably won't be able to make it into fabric anytime soon. Anyway, I thought that if I will be more gentle next time and make the fiber thinner it would be stronger and for now I wanted to explore the properties of this funky wood. The acid took quite a bit of time to destroy all the blue complex in the end resulting in these white and delicate flakes that now sank to the bottom of the solution. I got them out using a sieve and as expected they were incredibly soft, resembling some jelly more than a fiber. I dried this wood jello in an oven and when dry its texture was quite similar to that of the starting cellulose but the fibers were way shorter and a good bit denser. This material also didn't want to burn at all which was quite interesting. Anyway, before ending this project I wanted to try making my cellulose into an actual fiber and for that I had to make a few improvements to the process. First, I made this designer syringe to extrude a much finer stream of the cellulose solution. I also used this big glass baking tray for the acid bath to avoid moving the newly formed fibers around too much. I then carefully used the syringe to create this very long and thin fiber which I then left to marinate in the acid for a good while. When I came back I hoped that it would be at least a little stronger than the previous one, but upon touching it, it pretty much instantly fell apart. I was really quite disappointed because I put so much work into preparing the materials to make those fibers and the results I got were just trash. I figured that to make real fibers I had to do a lot more research and buy more equipment because because using a random syringe didn't feel quite right and I've actually already got quite a few ideas on how to improve this whole process and make my dream of making some chemistry merch at home come true. However, as of now, my patience reserves have totally run out and this video is already kind of gigantic, so when I feel like experimenting with artificial silk again, I will definitely make a follow-up video to this one which acts like a good foundation for a lot of future content. For now I have to thank you all for watching this really interesting project, if you enjoyed it you can like this video, share it with a friend and subscribe to my channel. If you want to further support my work and gain access to exclusive content unsuitable for YouTube as well as having your name displayed at the end of every video, I invite you to join my Patreon. Also, as always, a gigantic thank you goes to all my wonderful Patreon members for their support which allows me to take on all these projects and see you guys in the next video video.